All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All my divine ones, y'all check on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, baby. Y'all come on in. Come on in. All my divine ones, check on in this thing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And as y'all slide in this thing, good morning. I mean, as y'all slide in this thing, put y'all locations in the comments, baby. I see DC already. Yes, baby. Y'all put y'all locations in the comments so I can see where y'all tuning in from. Because God said we got divine ones all over the world, baby. Yes. Put y'all locations in the comments. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, Monica. Good morning. Y'all come on in. Come on in. So excited to see y'all. Yes. Slide on in. We got Houston in here this morning, baby. We got Atlanta in here this morning. We got Dallas, Texas in here this morning. Nashville, baby. Vernon, New York. Welcome to the live. We got Kansas City. We got Georgia, Louisiana. Yes, y'all come on in. Come on in. We got Jamaica. So y'all, I got to tell y'all. So, okay, I see you, Atlanta. I see Atlanta. I see Albuquerque, New Mexico in this thing. Okay, New Mexico. So I didn't even have plans to get on uh, and do a video this morning, but when I woke up this morning, I just woke up with the spirit, baby. I woke up with the spirit. That's the best way to wake up. Do you understand me? I woke up with the spirit, baby. The spirit was flowing all up and through this house. And I ended up on this video with y'all, okay? So I got a word for the, from the Lord for y'all today. This word right here, I'm telling you, I want y'all to open your hearts, open your minds to receive it. I hear God saying that it's going to break a lot of y'all free. Kawoo, baby. It just broke me free. <laughs> Do you understand me? It just broke me free. Um, and I want y'all to understand that the Lord speaks to us. He speaks to each and every one of us. He don't have favorites to say, oh, well, I'm only going to speak to Toya. Or I'm only going to speak to such and such. I'm only going to speak to Bishop. I'm only going to speak to Pastor. <laughs> I'm only going to speak to Reverend them. And he ain't never going to say nothing to you. No, God speaks to all his children but it's all about positioning, y'all. We got to be in position to be able to hear him when he speak. We got to, you know, rid our minds and rid our lives of all the distractions that's going on in the world. Because this stuff, so y'all know, it's a lot of distractions, baby. And you have, to, you have to create an environment of peace so that you can hear the voice of God. And even if that's not in your physical environment, you can create an environment of peace in your mind. Come on now, that's that's the most important environment, what's going on in our minds, because that's what's going to dictate our lives and, and the issues that's flowing in our life. So as I'm in the bathroom this morning, doing my face routine and stuff, and y'all, you know how you get up every morning. You look at your face every morning, right? <laughs> when you get up and go to the mirror, you look at your face every morning. So this is how I know this was God, because... You know, I've I've looked at my face a thousand times. Well, I don't know, a billion times. I don't know. I've looked at my face all my life. But this morning when I was in the bathroom and I was looking at my face, and I was washing my face, and I was doing my face routine, and I was looking at the features of my face. I was looking at my... I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Chosen ones. You chosen, you're going to want to tune in. You're going to want to listen, okay? So I'm looking at my face. I'm looking at the features of my face. I'm looking at my nose, looking at my eyes. I'm looking at the shape of my head. <laughs> I'm looking at my forehead, my ears, the way my ears are shaped, the way my lips are shaped, just everything. And God began to speak to me. He said, um, he said, chosen ones, he said, you have a unique beauty. You have a unique beauty. The Lord says you have a, you have a unique look. And this is not just about your physical features. When he spoke to me and he said features, he said you have, and he's speaking to every single one of his children. He's speaking to every single one of you that has an ear to hear today and you have eyes to see. I want you to open up your eyes and see what God is showing you in the spirit today. I want you to open up your ears so that your ears can be made open and you can hear the voice of the Lord today. He's telling you, baby, that you have unique features. You are chosen. 
you are a peculiar people. You are not of this world. And he, and he spoke this in my spirit this morning as I was looking at myself. And he said, why do you seek to be like them? God speaking now. Come on now. He talking. He talking to you. He talking to us today. He says, why do you seek to be like them? Why do you seek to look like them? And when I say them, I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about what we have seen on TV, what we have seen in the magazines, what he, what we have seen growing up of, of the standard of beauty and what we think beauty is supposed to look like and what we think handsome is supposed to look like and, and all this physical stuff that we've been programmed to see all these years. He spoke that in my spirit this morning. He said, why do you seek to be like them? He said, do you not know that every time you seek to be like them and you conform yourself to be like them, he said, you lose the beauty. Come on now. He says, you lose the beauty of who I created you to be. You, you lose a little bit more of your beauty, a little bit more of your uniqueness. And he said, why do you seek to sound like them? Oh, this for somebody. Oh, yeah. This for somebody that you've been beating yourself up because of how you sound. I don't know. I got to get on the videos and stuff, but I don't like the way I sound. I know I want to start a podcast, but I don't like the way I sound. My cousin them used to pick at my voice all the time. My family them pick at my voice. Say, you got a squeaky voice. Why you talk like that? Why you sound like that? You sound too high pitched. You sound too deep. You sound, you, you sound a mess. You, you tripping all over your words. You stuttering. You doing this. You doing that. You country, <laughs> you country, or you too proper, or you too this, or you too that, or you too whatever. God said, why do you seek to be like them? Why do you seek to sound like them? Why, why do you seek to look like them? He says, there is a reason why you don't look like them. There's a reason why. That's what he told me now. He said, there's a reason why you don't sound like them. And he said, there's a reason why you don't look like them. He said, because I have given you unique features. And this is what the Lord told me. Oh, it's y'all. Listen, it set me free. Do y'all understand me? It set me free because I have struggled with stuff within myself. And God told me to be very transparent with y'all on this video. Cause he said, that's the only way that you're going to really be able to get your breakthrough. So I'm willing to put myself on the chopping block. Okay. To the nations. <laughs> because that's just how much I love y'all. And I want you to get your breakthrough from this. So this is what he was speaking and revealing to me. So throughout my life, I'm going to reveal to y'all some stuff that I was teased about coming up. Uh, the shape of my head. <laughs> Why your head shape like that? You got a basketball head. You got a big old forehead. You got, so all my life, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to get hairstyles that cover up my forehead you know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the middle part bust down thing. Cause I got my, my forehead too big. I need a swoop, baby. I need a bang. I need, I need something to go over this forehead. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm speaking for some folks today. Cause God said a lot of people ain't going to get on the video and talk about it, but he told me to get on the vet. I feel the spirit this morning, baby. He told me to get on the video and talk about this thing today. Cause he said they're going to break his people free. He told me, he said, when you are called to be a mouthpiece, baby, Sometimes it's going to call for you to put yourself on the chopping block so that others can be free, so that others can get out of that bondage and that captivity that the enemy has had them locked up in all their life. All their life. God told me, he said, your head shaped like that because you have a unique beauty. I ain't want you to look like them. I ain't want you to have a little bit of head like they little bit of head. And who said that the little bit of head is the standard of beauty? <laughs> Come on now, who said that? Who 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 made that the standard that a small forehead is the ideal head? What if God said it was the bigger size forehead? We don't know that. But see, this is what he told me. This is what it says in the scripture. In Psalm 139 and 14, David says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And what he's in, in this scripture is talking about the attention and the carefulness and the care that God used when he created you. 
God was so careful when he created you, baby. He was so careful when he was knitting you together in your mother's womb. He was so careful to make, to make your eyes to be shaped exactly the way he wanted them to be shaped. He was so careful to make sure your head was shaped exactly the way he needed it to be shaped. He was so careful to make sure the bone structure in your face, your physique, your height, your weight. Come on now. Everything that's in your chromosomes, everything that's in your DNA, that's in your cells, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he says that you have a unique beauty. Yes. And I'm talking to my men and my women, baby. You have a unique look. You have a unique way. You have a unique sound. There is something that you bring to the marketplace that is unique to you. And the Lord says that when you embrace that, Yo, everything that's connected to you going to take off. Do y'all understand what I'm telling you? I'm telling you what I know because for the longest I struggled with how I sounded and I wanted to sound like them and I wanted to be articulate like them. And I wanted to make sure I, you know, enunciated my words and make sure, you know, I, I could, I couldn't be raw like I was with when I was, you know, just in my house or with my mom and them or, or with my, with my children and them or with my sister and them or my cousin and them. But God revealed to me, baby, when I had my breakthrough moment, he told me, he said, why are you trying to sound like them? He said, forget them folks. You are, I have made you unique to who you are. He says you have unique features and y'all listen to this about God. God is so strategic in how he made you and he's so careful in how he made you. Do you not know that everything that you naturally bring, like everything that's natural about you, it is exactly what it needed to be in order for you to fulfill your assignment. God is a purpose God. I want y'all to put that in the comments, baby. Get your journal. Get your journal. Get your blue ink pen. Put that in your journal and your blue ink pen and write it in the comments. Say God is a purpose God and capitalize purpose. He is a purpose God. God is a purpose God. What does that mean? Every single thing that he does. I was telling y'all on one of the other videos I just did recently that God don't do stuff just for the aesthetics He's not an aesthetically pleasing God. Come on now. He, he's not an ambiance God. Lately, I done got into these videos that I like to put on my TV when my TV, because I don't watch TV like that. But when my TV is just, you know, when I just want something on the TV, I'll just use it for like a piece of art or something. And I, I started, recently I done started playing like these aesthetically pleasing videos and these ambiance videos. I like like the work office ambiance videos. I like the, the bedroom ambiance videos and, you know, little ambiance stuff. And so I put that up there because I like the way it look. I like the aesthetics. I like the way it look. See, God say, I ain't like that. <laughs> he said, I ain't like that. He said, anything, anytime you see me doing something or you see me creating something is not just for it to look good. It's not just for people to come by and say, Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty. There is a meaning behind that. There is a purpose behind that. And I just heard God say for some business owners, side tip, for some of y'all that's in business, the Lord say, make sure that you ain't in business because it's aesthetically pleasing. Make sure that your business has purpose. Make sure the products that you pushing, that you selling, the services that you offering is not just for the aesthetics. I don't care if it's, if what you do is in aesthetics, if what you do is in makeup, is in skin, is in hair, is in, you know, all this stuff that's aesthetically pleasing. There must be a meaning. Come on now. There must be a purpose behind what you do. What is the why? What is the purpose in what you do? What make your stuff different than everybody else's? What what why should why should this be a priority for me? Why should I get this? Why should this be on my agenda to buy your product, to invest in your service? What's the meaning behind it? It's got to give more than just the aesthetics, baby, because God ain't like that. God ain't into just how it look and the beauty and people just walking by seeing how beautiful it is. So he says, "I have given you unique features." He says, "I have given you a unique look." He says, embrace that. And that is what he told me. He said, yeah, now you can go and do stuff to enhance your features, to enhance, you know, you want to look better. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting to look better. You should want to look better. You should want to work out. You should want to, uh, you know, take care of your skin. And you should, you should want to be the best version of yourself. You should want to enhance your features and enhance your beauty. But he said, above all, baby, 
I want you to understand who you are in the spirit and understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And before you hit anything, before you touched anything, before you bought any product, before you bought any skincare, before you bought any weave, before you bought any labels, any bag, any clothes, any shoes, before you bought any of that stuff, that you were already chosen. That you were set apart. Come on now. And that you are special to God. Listen to what 1 Peter 2 and 9 says. But you are a chosen generation. Come on now. Put that in the comments, baby. Say, I am the chosen one. This is who the word says you are. This ain't, this see, see let me tell y'all what people do. People will take this and use this stuff as a trend, as a fad, because they see that word trending a lot on social media. They see chosen one, chosen one, chosen one. So you got folk popping out all everywhere talking about chosen one, chosen one. But the Lord say, baby, I want you to go to the word. You ain't got to go on no video to hear somebody talk up to give you a message about the chosen one because it's in the word. First Peter two and nine, he said, you are a chosen generation. If you accept your identity in Christ today, you're going to understand that you are chosen one. You won't need to get that from no video or none of that. Anything you hear will be confirmation to what God then already said to you. Glory be to God. But you are a chosen generation. Listen, a royal priesthood. You are royalty. So he said, before you put on any Dior or Chanel or Fendi or Louis Vuitton or, 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 or any of these designers, baby, before you put on any designer, you understand that the clothes don't make you. The labels don't make you. Come on now. The weed don't make you. When Y'all, when I say weed, let me go ahead and address that real quick. When I say weed, I'm saying weave, but that's how we say it. <laughs> That's how we say it down here. We say weave. Well, we say weave, but the the real word is weave. But I probably need to be conscious of that because I don't want them to flag me because they think I'm saying something else. But y'all get what I'm saying. I'm talking about hair weave, okay? So I love I love experimenting with my hair. I love changing out my hair. I love I'm about to get ready to take these braids out, baby, because I miss my, I miss my wigs and stuff. So I love experimenting with my hair and stuff. But before I put on any hair. I'm talking about just my natural roots. Y'all see that new girl up there? My natural, <laughs> my natural roots. God said, love that. Love that. He said, now, yeah, you you going to add you, add you a little whatever you want to add to enhance your look and stuff. But he said, before you add anything to that, you know who you are. Know who you are in the kingdom, baby. Know that your identity is in Christ and that none of these things make you. They don't make you or break you because the Lord says you are fearfully and wonderfully made in him. And he says you have a unique look. You have unique features that are unique to you. Men of God. For y'all go in that barbershop and they spray that stuff on y'all. Come on now. You already a king before they spray anything on your forehead or on your tape line or any of that stuff. That stuff enhances your look. It enhances your handsomeness. <laughs> okay. But listen, long before you go in a barbershop and the barber touch you up and, and, and have you looking fresh and all that stuff, you got to know that you are already fresh. You got to know that you are already a man of God. You got to know that you are already royalty. You got to know that and then understand that these little things that I do, you know, whether I, if I didn't go do it, it wouldn't, it ain't going to change who I am on the inside. I might be looking a little rough on the outside, but it ain't going to change who I am on the inside. My heart is good. My heart is pure. Come on now. And God say, that's what we need to be the most focused on anyway, is our heart. What that heart do? Somebody put that in the comments, baby. Say what that heart do. So I'm telling y'all, listen, y'all about to see a whole nother, a whole nother level of Toya. And I want to see a whole nother level of you because everything that I was kind of trying to like hide and trying to, mm, yeah, I don't know, you know, I, uh, why my feet shaped like that? Or why my feet long? Or why I'm tall like that? Or why God said, uh, uh, he said, you have a, <laughs> you have a unique look. You are sanctified. You, you all know what sanctified means. Sanctified means to be set apart to be set apart, for to be separated from the masses, to be separated from the world, that you are only for God's use, that you are holy unto God. That's what sanctified mean. How we want to be sanctified, but we still want to look like them. We still want to look like the world. He said, you can't have both of them, baby. He said, which one is it going to be? You got to embrace who God has naturally made you to be. And it's certain stuff about us that we can't change. 
that we can't enhance. And God said, you're just going to have to accept it. You're just going to have to embrace who you are and understand that you're the chosen one and you have a unique, you have a unique beauty. And this is, like I said, for men and women, you have a unique beauty. Listen to what he say. He said, you are not like everybody else. You are not of this world, so you won't have the world's look. Come on now. And this is something that we have to constantly examine within ourselves and on the outside appearance every day because it's so easy, y'all. And, of course, we'll say, well, you know, I, I don't do what the world do. And yeah, we're going to say that because that's the word and that's how we're supposed to be living. But you really have to examine yourself every day. You have to examine yourself every day. And you have to say, why am I wearing this shirt? Am I wearing this shirt? Because I like this shirt and this shirt is, is what I would have chosen. Or am I wearing this shirt because this is what they said I am supposed to be wearing? Or this is what my, 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 my home girl told me look cute on me, but I really don't like it. But this, or this is what's, what's trending or this is what's going on in fashion week or this is what God say. You got to, you got to know who you are on the inside, baby. You got to be unique to you. You got to be authentic to you and who God has created you to be. Glory be to God. So he says, you are not like everybody else. You won't have the world's look. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 2 and 10. I want y'all to write these scriptures down too. Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. Come on now. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I want y'all to put that in your journal. Get your blue ink pen. Say, I am his workmanship. He revealed this to me this morning when I was looking at my face. He said, he said, woman, you got to embrace. He said, embrace your face. Embrace who I created you to be. Embrace your features. He said, when you look at me, you, he said, when you look at yourself, you're looking at me. You looking at my handiwork. You looking at my workmanship. You looking at my image. You looking at my reflection. Come on now, you are his workmanship. Glory be to God. You are a divine masterpiece. I got that in there right on my mirror, uh, right in between my two mirrors in my bathroom. I am God's masterpiece. I want y'all to write that thing down, baby. Put it in the comments. After you say, I am his workmanship, I want you to say, I am God's masterpiece. You are his masterpiece, baby. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are exactly who you needed to be to fulfill your assignment. Every single feature that God gave you, he gave it to you because that's what you needed to fulfill your assignment. That's who you needed to be. It's something about the look that you bring that's going to, I don't know how God do it. It's just him in his, in his divine, infinite wisdom. It's something about how he, he shapes you and he forms you from the ends, not just the outside, but the inside too. It's certain things about your personality, about your heart, about your spirit, about your character. And then it flows over to the outside. It's certain things about your skin tone. There's a reason my skin is the color that it is. Come on now. There's a reason why my accent is the way that it is. There's a reason why my lips are shaped the way that they is. It is exactly what it needed to be in order for me to fulfill my assignment. And that's the way the Lord wants you to start looking at this thing too. That you are exactly who you need to be. You look exactly like you need to look in order to fulfill your assignment. And the Lord say, and that don't mean you you carry a spirit of complacency now. And you say, you know, I'm I'm I weigh this and I'm just gonna weigh this for the rest of my life because this is who God made me to be. No. Y'all use discernment with that, okay? Because remember we said you are still becoming. <laughs> okay, your spirit, your spirit is exactly the way God created it to be. But there's also some things in the physical. Because of that, because of that programming and because of that, those bricks that the enemy has built up in our mind, for some of us, we can be living in a body that's not really us. That's not really us. That's not who God created us to be in the spirit because we didn't got so far away from God. But see, this is why I push y'all to come into the kingdom, to seek the kingdom, because the more you seek the kingdom and you seek God with your whole heart, listen what it say in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to the world. Don't seek to be like them, but it says be transformed, transformation, transformation. That sound familiar? Y'all hear me say that on every video, transformation. 
This is why I push transformation. This is why I scream transformation. My whole brand has uh, has ascended and just and just shifted and transformed into transformation. Everything I talk about is a transformation. You changing your life and becoming the person that God has created you to be. Because the more you seek transformation in Jesus Christ, the more you're going to look like God created you to look. I'm telling y'all what I know. Do you understand me? Because when I first started with him on day one, I don't look like how I look when I started on day one. So I could tell you that as I continue to seek him and I, and I am not at my full potential, I am not where God desires for me to be on the inside and the outside. It's still more things that I got to improve with my spirit. It's still more things that I got to improve in my body. Come on now. So I'm transforming. I'm becoming as I continue to seek him and his righteousness. And I continue to seek the kingdom. He transforms me. I'm watching my body change. I'm watching my look change. I'm watching my heart change. I'm watching my spirit change. I'm watching my attitude change. I'm watching my temperance change. Everything begins to transform as you seek him with your whole heart, as you seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Listen to what he say. He say, you dance to a different beat. I want y'all to put that in the comments. Say, I dance to a different beat. I dance to a different beat. And this is what God told me. He said, stop trying to run your business like they run their business. Let me tell y'all something. You got to work out your own soul salvation and you got to work out your own business. Now, you can have mentors and business coaches and all these folks. But I'm going to tell y'all something. Tell y'all something real now. As I'm following God and as I'm doing exactly what God tell me to do, no matter how unorthodox and how non-traditional it is, but I listen to him like when I'm really listening to him and I do what he be telling me to do. And I don't like, you know, yeah, I have, you know, people that I consult with and I have mentors and stuff, but I do what God tell me to do. My business is sin. Do y'all understand me? It ascends. It goes higher. I earn more. I'm more creative. I'm, I'm more at peace. I see more fruit in my life when I'm listening to God versus, oh, well, let me let me do this and do that because this is what this person told me to do or this is what that mentor told me to do or that's what that coach told me to do because people are going to tell you what worked for them. See what I'm saying? And, and they use principles, then the principles are universal. They'll work for anybody. But you got to figure out your own soul salvation. You got to, because the road that God taking you might be different than the road he took Toya. Or might be different than the road he took Pastor such and such. He might be taking you down a different road. So you got to work out your own soul salvation. You dance to a different beat. Glory be to God. Listen to what the scripture say in John 15 and 19. Y'all write this one down too. John 15 and 19. It says, if you were of this world... The world would love his own. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You wonder why they can't stand you. You wonder why everything you done did to try to fit in with your family, it just won't work. You just don't fit in with them folks. Who am I talking to today, baby? You wonder why you out of everything you done tried to do to make peace, they still can't stand you. They still don't like you. They'll never like you. You can get on the shirt off your bike. They ain't never going to like you. Listen, if you were of this world, the world would love his own. We love our own. We love our own. People that's with us, that's walking with us, that it's easy to love people that, that are of you. If you were of this world, the world would love his own. Listen to what it says. But it says, because you are not of this world, but I have chosen. There go that word again. Come on now. But I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you the world hates you so the lord say when you are persecuted when you are lied on when you are talked about come on now when you are when you are criticized when you are pushed aside when you are pushed to the bike of the line when you are rejected when you are ghosted when you are hated when you all all that stuff baby betrayed he says count it all joy Count it all joy. Come on now. I want y'all to put that in the comments. Get your journal. Get your blue ink pen. Write it in your journal. Say count it all joy. Because if I was of this world, the world would love his own. 
But the Lord says that I have called you out. He says that you are chosen. I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. So he said, why are you trying to figure out why they don't like you? Why are you trying to figure out why they won't love your stories and react to your stories and support your business and, 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 and befriend you and be in your corner with everything you want to do? He says, you might as well look for these things. Might as well look for these things. Come on now, because they're going to come because he says you are not of this world. The moment you accepted Jesus into your heart, you became a enemy of this world. Do you understand me? You are not, you no longer of this world. And he says, now it's time for you to see you see up until the point where we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. We've been walking to the beat of the world. We've been conformed to the world. So we've been doing this and doing that because that's what the world told us we supposed to be doing. We've been working this job because that's what they told us we supposed to be doing. We've been majoring in these subjects in college because that's what they told us we were supposed to be doing. Who am I talking to today, baby? But see, when you, when you come into the kingdom, kingdom living, baby. Kingdom living is next level living. Do you understand me? And when you come into the kingdom, you are no longer of this world. And that's the moment that you show up on Satan's radar. That's the moment that you start going out. Beep, 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 beep. Your name start being highlighted. Your name, you got a target on your bike because he wasn't worried about you as long as he had you in his fold. He didn't have to worry about you because he had you on lock. But the moment that you woke up to your identity and you understood that I am a chosen one. Baby, first Peter two and nine. I am a royal priesthood, baby. I am royalty. Why I'm letting you treat me like a peasant? Why I'm letting these folks in these relationships and these marriages and these friendships and stuff treat me like I'm a peasant? I am royalty. Put that in the comments, baby. Say, I am royalty. The Bible says that you are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. Anybody just ever felt strange? You just felt strange. You just felt like a stranger in your own, maybe in your own house, in your own family. You felt like a stranger at, at your job. You felt like a stranger. You felt like an outsider. You felt like a foreigner. You felt like you was in a foreign land. You felt like these people don't understand, baby. These people is sleeping here. You felt like you was the only one that was woke. You felt like you was the only one that was seeing what was really going on. They just sleep in the spirit. They just ignorant. They have no idea what's going on in the spiritual realm. They don't see the warfare. They don't understand. They, they, they ain't got no sense. They ain't got no spiritual sense. You the only one up in there with some sense. You done felt like the outsider. You done felt like the loner. You done been in a, a room full of people. Tell y'all something. I, you can be in a stadium packed out full of folks and still be alone. Still be lonely. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You saying to you because except they walking in the spirit with you, the Bible say, how can two walk together except they agree, agree in spirit, mentally, somebody that's on the same mental pattern as you, somebody that's on the same mental level as you, somebody that's walking with Christ on this same journey as you, except you got that baby. Come on now. And even with that, even with that, it's not saying that they a bad person, but they can be walking with Christ, but they may not, God may not be calling them down the same road that he calling you to. So you, when you walking with God, when you step into the kingdom, you got to accept them seasons where he calling you to be alone because it's in them seasons where he is revealing the most to you, that he's showing you the most about your business, that he's showing you the most about yourself, your character. I was in the back, when I was in the bathroom and I just got that revelation to come on this video with y'all, wasn't nobody in there with me. I was in there by myself. I was looking at myself. I was looking at my face in the mirror and I heard God's voice. Now, if I would have had somebody in there talking to me and I'd have been on the phone and I'd have been doing this and doing that, I wouldn't have heard him. I'd have just looked at my face like I always look at my face and I'd have just did my face routine and I'd have walked out that bathroom. But because I was alone, come on now, I could hear him. I could hear him. And, and it, it, God just revealed this to me. It's just like Moses with that burning bush, with that burning bush. God is putting burning bushes in y'all paths, each and every one of you. And, and, and when you inquire within, when you, it's going to be something that you see and you're going to say, Hmm, that's strange. Hmm. That wouldn't normally be like that. Why is that like that? Cause I'm just looking at my face and it was just like, 
something strange. Like it was like a strange feeling, like something strange. It was a burning bush. It was a spiritual burning bush. And then I looked closer. When you come closer, God going to reveal to you that this is holy ground. Come on now. That he, that he has brought you. I feel the power of God. That he has brought you up into the spirit, baby. You can be physically somewhere. You could be physically sitting somewhere and your spirit can ascend to a whole nother place. We are spiritual beings. We can put ourselves anywhere we want to be. Do y'all know that? I do it all the time. I could be sitting right here in my bedroom where I'm sitting now. I could be sitting in my office. I could be sitting in my truck. I could be sitting anywhere. But in my mind, baby, I'm somewhere on a mega stage. <laughs> I'm somewhere on a mega stage, baby. I hear divine ones all over that thing. Y'all, y'all pipe that thing out too, baby. I be there all the time in my mind. See, when it happened, I can it, it gonna be like it gonna be like a replay. That's the way God wanted to be with you. When you get to where He done called you to be, you ain't gonna be nervous like you think you gonna be. Cause He wants you to be done live that thing out so many times in your head that it done already happened. So by the time you get there, you just acting out what done already happened. What done already happened. So remember that word I gave y'all when I told y'all that chosen ones are not of this world. Chosen ones are in their own world. You are a chosen generation. God is just affirming that. He's just confirming that even more to you on this video. And he and he uh, broke it down to me this morning in a way of your features. He says you have unique features. This is for each and every one of you that have embraced your chosen one identity. Stop beating yourself up because of how your nose look. Stop beating yourself up because what what your head shaped like. Stop beating yourself up because of your hairline or because of whatever. You know what it is. You fill in the blank. Stop beating yourself up because you got broad shoulders and you don't want, you don't want broad shoulders. Stop beating. That's it, baby. Stop beating yourself up because you bow-legged. All my bow-legged folks. Y'all know it. people that think that that's, that look good, baby. Because see, what you beating down, what you saying look a mess, somebody else saying, ooh, we. I sure wish I had me somebody that was bow-legged. <laughs> I sure wish I had me somebody that was bow legged, baby. And while you beating down your lips saying, mm, I be talking about, oh, Lord, I got soup coolers. I got some big old lips. And God, like, child. Then you look up and folks paying money to get their lips injected. Folks paying money to get soup coolers. Folks paying money. Come on now. So it's about you embracing your look. Pigeon toe. Yes, baby. Not needed. Bow legged. All that. The Lord says, embrace it. You not need it, you bow leg it because you need it to be to fulfill your purpose. And when you start seeing it as beautiful, other people going to see it as beautiful. Because other people see us the way we see ourselves. Come on now. They going to see you the way you see yourself. So if you think you look a hot mess, they going to think you look a hot mess. If you in your head about your shape and you ain't got no hips and Lord, I wish I had some more hips and I wish my stomach wasn't this big and I wish I didn't have no double belly and I wish I could not even got this thing out where they say unbig your bike, baby. I'm like, well, Lord, I got to, <laughs> I got to unbig my bike. God says, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Embrace your bike. Okay, cross eye, everything, baby. Big forehead, yeah, I'm right there with you. He says embrace it. Embrace it. And if there's something that you can, like I said, some of our features we can enhance, but some of them we just got to accept it for what it is. And you got to, the Lord, I remember that, uh, what was that prayer? I used to see my grandma had it on her wall. I think it was the serenity prayer where it say, Lord, give me the courage to, or something. I can't remember what it said. But I know in one part of that prayer, it was saying, um, there's basically, there's stuff that you can change and there's stuff that you can't change. And, it, and in that prayer, it was saying, give me the wisdom to know the difference. Give me the wisdom to know the difference. Like it's stuff that I can change. Give me the courage to change the things I can. And then the things that I can't change, give me, get, just give me the, the spirit to be able to embrace it embrace it and it's not saying that you're changing it because god don't want you to change who you are but it is certain things you can do to enhance your look y'all get what i'm saying like you can enhance it god grant me the serenity thank you so much god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change that's it that's it that's it baby so now whatever whatever questions y'all got because this can go real deep this can go real deep i want you to take it to god in prayer 
Take it to God in prayer, baby. Okay, I'm going to give y'all the central message. And wherever you spin off with that thing, I want you to pray about it. Take it to God in prayer. The courage to change the things I can. That's it. That's it. Nicole, is that you? Uh, the courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. That's it. That's it right there, baby. But God says, chosen ones, you have a unique beauty. I'm finna wrap this up, but y'all listen to the rest. I got to get the rest out what he told me. He says, your features are unique. Embrace your features. They are unique. He says, you were created to be unique. You were created to stand out. You were created to make an impact. You were created to make an influence on this world. Do not be conformed to the world. But he says, embrace who I have created you to be because he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were made with careful attention. You were made with, uh, with, with care. The Lord says, I, I fearfully made you. I took my time when I made you. I took my time when I crafted you. I took my time when I formed you. I was careful not to make a mistake. Come on now. And you have to think of yourself and look at yourself like that, that I am not a mistake. I am not a mistake, but I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of you, the enemy will try to beat you up because, uh, beat you up with your identity and your self-worth and stuff. Because for some of you, it may have been like your parents weren't married and it might've just been a fling thing or it might've just been something, you know, and then here you come. And then it was like the enemy will try to make you think, oh, I was a mistake. Like I wasn't supposed to be born or whatever the circumstances or whatever the conditions was that caught, you know, that, that led to you being born. You have to understand that God is a purpose. God, he is a purpose. God, baby. And you were born because you have purpose. You were born because you were here. You are here to impact and influence the world through the gift that the Lord placed on the inside of you. So you have to embrace who you are, embrace who God created you to be and embrace your story. Embrace your story, embrace your features, embrace everything about you. And then if you, if you want to change whatever that's on you, that's between that's you and your business. The yin and that's another thing. You ain't a lot of stuff. we be telling folks. You ain't got to tell folks. That ain't none of their business. <laughs> that ain't none of their business. Whatever you feel like you need to do, you go do you. But above all, you, you love who you are on the inside. Love your spirit. Love your heart. Love your soul. Come on now. Because out of that place flows the issues of life. If that ain't right in now, it won't matter what you go do. Come on now. It won't matter how many times you let them stick you in your lip. It won't matter how many times they stick you in your face because you still won't see nothing that you feel like is worth looking at. You still won't be satisfied. Because it's going, it's flowing from your heart. It's flowing from your mind. So you got to love the inside. You got to embrace the inside. You got to do that inner work. Do that spiritual work. Because that's what be leading to people not being satisfied. And they got to keep going and getting this done and getting that nipped and getting that tucked and getting that taken care of and all that stuff. Because it's flowing from the heart. The heart is not right. I heard somebody say, it's not the eyes that see but it's the mind that sees. It's the, the heart, the subconscious mind that sees. It's not the eyes that see. And I believe that. I believe that. Because when your, when your mind changes, it's like your eyes change. You see things that you didn't see before. Now, them things was always there. They didn't just show up all of a sudden. They always been there. Them opportunities always been there. Them people always been there. Whatever that new thing is that you're seeing is really not new. It's always been exactly where it has always been. But what changed? Your mind. Your mind. So now you see what, what you was once overlooking. You see it now. And you're like, where all this stuff been? Child, my mind started changing. I'm like, what? Where all this stuff been? It God said it been right there the whole time, but you didn't see it because your mind needed to change. So it's the mind that sees. So you got to change the mind first. You got to change the heart first. But when we work, when we change the outside, when we want to go and fix this and fix that, and we ain't changed our heart, we ain't never gonna be satisfied. We ain't never gonna be. It ain't never gonna be enough. It ain't never gonna be big enough. It ain't never gonna be thick enough until we change the inside. We got to get the inside right. So I love y'all. I love y'all so much. God was speaking to me this morning, baby. And this is an unusual, unusual message, but I felt led to bring it. 
I felt led to bring it because God told me. And I just, I want y'all to go to the mirror. I'm going to do this when I get off here. Go to the mirror and look at yourself from, from head, from the sole, from the uh, top of your head to the sole of your feet. Crown of your head from the sole of your feet. Look at yourself. And I want you to embrace every single thing about you. Every single thing about you. And I want you to tell everything that you have criticized, that you have hated about yourself. I want you to go from, from one thing to the next and say, I love, I love, I love my head. I love my forehead. <laughs> I love my nose. I love my cheekbones. I used to I used to be going to God like, Lord, why you give me no dimples? I want some dimples. <laughs> I got these big old smile lines and it make my makeup crease right there. I'm like, Lord, why you need to give me, you could have just, when you was, you know, you could have just poked a little, you know, gave me some dimples. God say, uh-uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So, okay, when I go to the mirror, I'm going to say, Lord, I love my smile lines. I love my smile lines. Come on now. I'm going to embrace that. Them ain't going nowhere. I got to embrace that. I love my chin. And then the stuff we be beating up about ourselves, other people love it. Other people love it. Other people look at you like, like if each and every one of y'all, you started just being brutally honest and naming out stuff, I would probably look at that and just be like, child. And then whatever I say, you think about it. You like, Toya, girl, that ain't nothing. Y'all see what I'm saying? But see, we build, we stuff be so big in our own mind. We are our biggest critic. We the hardest on ourselves than other people. We more hard on ourselves than other people. So you, the Lord say, love this person. Love this person. Love your soul. Love your spirit. Because how you treat everybody else is going to flow from that. How you feel about yourself. How you love yourself. You can't come love me. You can't say you love me and you don't love yourself. You, I can't, you know, take, you can't take care of me and you ain't taking care of yourself. You got to love yourself first. You got to love your spirit, your heart. And then everything going to flow from that. If you were of this world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of this world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The world hates you. Come on now. You will never fit in. You will never be, because the Lord has called you to be set apart. You are chosen. Chosen ones have unique beauty. Chosen ones have unique features and the enemy wants to, to get in the mind of God's chosen ones and make us take our unique features that God gave us to embrace and, and the things that are going to make us stand out and be unique and be powerful. Excuse me. He wants to cause us to uh, be in our head about that, to be in our head about that, because if I can get you in your head about how your, you know, how your bike look or how your legs look or how your stomach look or, or how your feet look in these shoes or whatever. If I can get you in your head about that, then I can throw your message off. I could throw your message off. Now you can't, you can't witness the way God wants you to witness. You can't be powerful the way God wants you to be powerful. Cause he say, for one, if, if, you know, if it is an issue with something that you can fix, he says, get up and fix it. Get up and get up and work out. Get up and exercise. Get up and change your diet. Get up and invest in some skincare products. Get up and invest in something to improve or enhance your look. That's another thing. The enemy wants us to continue to sit down and beat ourselves up. You know, it's people that for years have talked about they got to lose weight or they got to or they got to get in shape or they got to get toned. And it ain't happened yet. It ain't happened yet. That wears on your self-esteem too, because you know, you know the place that you're in, but you're not doing nothing to change it. Come on now. You're not doing nothing to change it. So the Lord say, I want you to embrace. This is a two-way message. I want you to embrace your, your features and understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But I also want you to put in the work to become the best version of yourself. I want you to put in the work to become the person that I have created you to be, because yes, you are chosen. Yes, you are powerful. Yes, you are royalty, but you have to work in order to manifest that. You have to work in order to make that come into fruition on the outside so that people can see who you really are. It's one thing to be chosen and know it on the inside, 
But it's another thing to look like it on the outside for people to be able to look at you and see it. I should be able to look at you and see it. And it's not to say that you look like that person on that TV screen, that you look like that person on that magazine. No, you're not going to look like them because you have your own unique beauty. But in God, who God created you to be your own unique way, I should look at you and I should be able to see the power of God in your life. I should be able to see that you, even if I don't know God, then I should see that it's something different about that woman right there. It's something different about that man right there. That man right there, he carried himself, he carried himself with honor. He carried himself with respect. I don't know who that man is and I don't know what he do, but I know whatever he do is important. That man right there do something important because it's in his shoulders. It's in his posture. It's in his demeanor. It's in his mannerisms. It's the way he talk. It's the way he walk. Come on now. I, I don't know that lady, but it's something about that lady right now. Y'all know that lady. Y'all know what she do. That lady, her posture is always on point, baby. That lady is all her clothes are always clean. Her clothes are always pressed. Listen, I don't care. You, you, we shopping at Target. We shopping at Walmart, baby. We thrifting. We doing all that. But they don't know it. Why? Because just like my grandma and them used to tell us, long as you clean, baby, long as you decent. Long as you decent, that's all that matters. <laughs> That's all that matter. Long as them things clean and you decent and you ain't got no wrinkles and stuff. And you see, it's about it's about you taking care of the little things. People be thinking it's about labels and stuff. And, oh, I need I need a designer bag and I need this and I need that. No, you need to take care of what you got. You need to be faithful over the few. And then God will elevate you and He'll make you ruler over many. But you got to get that heart right first. What that heart do? It all flows from the heart. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. So go to your mirror. This is y'all homework. I'm your coach, and I'm going to give you an action plan, okay? We done had a coaching session. Now I'm going to give you an action plan. When you leave off of your session today, <laughs> we done had a coaching session, baby. When you leave off your session today, this is your homework. This is your action steps, okay? I want you to go to your mirror, and you're going to do this every day. You're going to go to your mirror. If you have a body mirror, I prefer a body mirror, but if not, you go to the mirror in your bathroom, but you go to this mirror, and you look at every single thing that you have criticized about yourself that you can physically see, and I, I want you to first, before you go into affirming, saying affirmations, I want you to first acknowledge what you have said in the past. This is very important, because a lot of times, people tell y'all to just start saying affirmations, but if you have not undid the damage that has been done and you just try to put affirmations on top of that, them affirmations ain't going to work. They ain't going to work. It's just like um, going in there cleaning cleaning, cleaning the, the bathrooms and stuff, but you don't pick up the rugs and stuff and clean up under the rugs. You ain't moving nothing around. You just cleaning what you can see and then saying, oh, it's clean. But then I go in there and pick up the rugs and stuff and it's all kind of particles and dirt and stuff up under the rugs. It's not really clean. So did you really clean it or did you just fix up what you could see? So it's the same way with your mind. You got to go underneath the surface. You got to pick up the rugs. You got to flip the rugs. You got to unscrew stuff. You got to uh, move, pick up the chair, move from up, clean from up under the chair to open the, to turn the door around, get behind that door, get up in that corner, get up in that crack, in that crevice. It's the same way with your mind. So the first thing I want you to do when you go to that mirror, you go to that mirror with your journal and with your blue ink pen and you acknowledge everything negative that you have said about yourself. Everything negative that you have said about your body physically that you can see. I hate, And I want you to write it just like you said it. Write it just like you said it. Be brutally honest. Write it just like you said it. Because I want you to read it and I want you to see just how bad you talk about yourself. I want you to see just how bad you be down in yourself. I hate my bow legs. I hate my knees. No, I hate my not needed knees. I hate my big forehead. I hate my bumpy skin. I hate my... I, I want you to write it just like you say it. Just like you be thinking it in your mind. You know how you be saying it. I want you to write it just like that. And what you're doing is you 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 addressing the dirt. You addressing the stinking thinking. Come on now, I hate my long feet. <laughs> I can't never find shoes in my shoe size because my feet so long. I hate my long feet. Write all that stuff down. I'm gonna do it too. Come on now, write all that stuff down. And then I want you to look at that and say, wow, this is what I've been saying to myself. This is what I've been telling myself. These are the seeds that I have sown. These are the thoughts that I have been thinking. 
and I am going to reap the, a harvest from the seeds that I have sown. And if I don't want a harvest from these seeds, let me change these seeds. So after you have written down everything negative that you have thought in your mind or said out of your mouth and things that other people have said to you, write that down too. What have other people said to you? What have other people made fun of you about? Write it down. So right after that, the next step, I want you to forgive. Come on now. I want you to say a forgiveness prayer. Just Lord, I forgive little Billy 25 years ago for, for calling me bow legged on the playground. And I was crying and it hurt my feelings. I forgive him. You ain't got to go talk to the folks and tell the folks, but you just acknowledge it in the spirit that I forgive. So everything that came from the outside, from another person, that they said to you, they made fun of you, they criticized you, they talked about you, about your physical features. Say a prayer of forgiveness and forgive them, okay? And then everything that you have said about yourself, I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to ask for forgiveness within yourself. I want you to say a forgiveness prayer within yourself. Tell yourself, I apologize. I'm sorry for not seeing your value. I'm sorry. As you're looking in the mirror, I'm sorry for not seeing your worth. I'm sorry for criticizing you. I'm sorry for not seeing that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I acknowledge what I said about you and I'm sorry. And from this day forward, you make a vow to yourself from this day forward. I will be conscious of those thoughts. I will be conscious of what I said. I will be conscious of what I spoke over myself and my body. And I will change my talk. I will change my self-talk. That's the work that has to be done before them affirmations. Before you say any affirmation, that's that work that has to be done first. After you done did all that, then you can say, I love my feet. I love my body. I love my head. I love my, my shoulders. I love my bike. I love my body. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's your homework. Okay, I want y'all to do it. I want you to do it. And to if you know another divine one that's, that watched these videos with you, because some of y'all, you send it to your cousins, you send it to your friends, your sisters, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father. So if you know of another divine one that's watching this video with you, I want y'all to connect, right? And I want y'all to be accountability partners. And I want y'all to hold each other accountable to this homework. I want y'all to hold each other accountable to this message. Okay, glory be to God. So I am Latoya O'Keel. I love y'all so much. When I say hold each other accountable, make sure they did their homework and they're going to make sure you did yours. Hey, you watched Toya's video, what Toya was saying about the, about the mirror assignment. Did you do yours today? Girl, I did mine today. I did my homework. Man, I did my homework, man. Toya was on to something with that thing, man. I, I'm starting to feel better about myself. I'm starting to, you're going to see some, you're going to see some fruits. You're going to see some fruits because you a chosen one, baby. And you got to walk like you know that. You got to talk like you know that. You got to love yourself like you know that. Chosen ones have unique beauty. You will never fit in. And they will not love you. They will not. And, and it's not to say that you, you know, um, don't turn that into a negative thing. But embrace that as this is, this is what comes along with the territory of walking with Christ. This is what comes along with the territory of being chosen and knowing that I'm chosen. I'm not going to be accepted by everybody. I'm not going to be loved by everybody. And that's okay. I still love them. Now I ain't finna run behind them and beg them and be all up in, you know, be all up in behind them. No, I'm gonna be about my father's business. I'm gonna stay in my own lane and I'm gonna mind my own business. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold no grudges in my heart because uh, the world don't love me or they don't like no God said that shouldn't be our focus anyway. We shouldn't want to be loved by them. We should no. Our focus is on the kingdom and Jesus Christ is God pleased with my life. When the Father looks at me, does he see his son? Does he see Jesus Christ? That's my concern. That's gotta be our concern. And everything else gonna be taken care of, baby. Okay. I am Latoya Okia. I love y'all so much. Do y'all homework. Go back, watch these, watch this video again. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel too. Go back and watch this video again. Write down them scriptures. Also too, I want y'all to write this scripture down. Romans 13 and 14. Write down Romans 13 and 14. God told me to put this scripture up somewhere by my bed so I can see it as soon as I wake up. He said, put it in my closet right there so I can see it as soon as I go in there to pick out my clothes that I'm going to wear for the day. 
He said, put Romans 13 and 14 up right where you close it, right where you wake up it. Because he said, when you get up in the morning, I want you to put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. What does that mean? Just like I went in there this morning and got that shirt off that hanger and put that shirt on. God said, I want you to put my son on. Put my son on. Put him on. He said, "You, I don't care if you've been on the battlefield for the Lord for 10 years, for 15 years. He said, every day you get up, I want you to, you got to put him on. You got to put him on today just like you put him on yesterday. Because what you did yesterday ain't going to get you into heaven. Come on now. It's what we get up and we, we got to make a decision to put him on every day. Every day, because we don't know when the Father going to call us. Come on now. So we got to make sure we got him on every day. Don't leave your house and you ain't put him on. Don't leave your bedroom and you ain't put him on. You wouldn't walk out there in front of them children and you were naked. You wouldn't go up there on that job if you were naked. So he said, don't leave your house. Don't you leave your, your bed. Don't walk out of your closet. Except you have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to put him on, baby. What does that mean? So when I get up in the morning, I have to make a decision today that I'm going to serve God today. I'm going to seek the kingdom of God today. Come on now. I'm not going to fall back into my old ways today. I have to make a conscious decision that I'm going to live for Jesus today. That I'm going to I'm going to look up to the life of Jesus. I'm going to live my life just like Jesus lived his or I'm going to strive to be just as close to that as I possibly can. Come on now. That's what that means. I'm not going to go back to the old person because I'm a new creation now. I'm a new person. I choose to be the new person today. I, when I woke up today, I had to make a decision that I was not going to get up as the old woman that I used to be, the old person that I used to be getting up fussing, hollering at the children, mad, upset, snappy, uh, 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 going off on people, angry, bitter, depressed. When I got up this morning, I said, I'm not going to do that. I put on my worship music. I, did, I went in my bathroom. I brushed my teeth. I did my face routine. I went and woke the kids up and, and got, got them up. And when I get off of here, I'm going to get them started on their school lessons and stuff for the day. I had to make a decision to be a different person today. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on now. And then it say, when you put him on, you will make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of times when these lusts get on you, and you want to go do something that's not of God. Cause Come on now. You human. You human. You saved, but you still human. <laughs> so stuff come up on you. Stuff rise up in your flesh. Ask yourself, did I put on Jesus today? Oh, did he fall off? Let me put him back on, baby. Let me put back on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, you know, sometimes the clothes, the clothes might fall off you or something, baby. It might go to hanging a little bit, and you might need to fix it. You know, your bra strap or something might start showing, and you need to kind of fix your shirt and stuff. He said it's the same way, baby. Oh, my, my, my lust trying to come over me. Let me fix my shirt. Hatred trying to come over me. I see a little hatred showing. I see a little envy. I see a little jealousy showing. Let me fix my shirt. Men, sometimes your pants go to hanging a little bit. Now your boxes and stuff showing that people can see your underwear. Oh, let me, uh-uh. Let me pull up my pants a little bit. Let me tighten my belt a little bit. My pride showing. Come on now. My pride showing. Let me, let me, let me fix my garment. Let me fix my clothes a little bit. D did I put on the Lord Jesus Christ today? And, and sometimes it take us adjusting him throughout the day because we done forgot. <laughs> we done forgot. And our clothes done went to sleeping. Our spiritual clothes done went to sleeping. So we got to fix that. We got to go in the bathroom and fix our clothes. Come on now. Sometimes you got to go. You got to go in the bathroom. You got to go sit in the car. You got to go pray for a few minutes because you about to go off on somebody. They sitting up there talking and they don't even know you about to go outside their head. So you got to go out there and just take you a breather. Just take you a moment and just go fix your garments, baby. Fix your clothes. Let me put Jesus back on, baby. Let me get this get this right because they don't know. I'm about to go upside their head. I'm about to do this. I'm about to, you, listen. You human. You human. That's why he said every day I want you to put on my son. Put him on. Then you're going to be conscious of the decisions that you make. You're going to be conscious of the things that you do. You're going to be conscious of the places that you go. Because you, you made that conscious decision that morning when you got up out of bed to put him on. To put him on. Now when lust start knocking at your door. And God said when that lust, when that spirit of lust get heavy on y'all. He said I want you to call on the name of Jesus. 
That's what he told me. He said, call on the name of Jesus, baby. He said, call him until something break in you. Call his name until that spirit leave you. Call his name, baby. Do y'all understand me? When that spirit of anger get on you, call on the name of Jesus. When that spirit come on you, well, you know you about to do something that God is not going to be pleased with. Because you can feel it right before you do it. Right before you about to do something that you know the Father wouldn't be pleased with. That spirit is like that. Your, your spirit rise up and let you know it's like an alert. It give you an alert saying, hey, you about to fall. Hey, you about to fall. Hey, you about to make a mistake. Hey, you about to do something wrong. And you have that moment. You have that quick moment right there where you got to make a decision. It's like you be at a spiritual crossroad. You can go left with this thing or you can go right. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus because any unclean spirit will not be able to dwell in that atmosphere. It will not be able. The Bible says at the name of Jesus. Come on now. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. His name is the name above all names. Call on the name of Jesus. And call him until it lets you go, baby. Call him until your mind shifts and your mind changes. And all of a sudden, you don't want to do that thing no more that you was about to do. Call on his name. And whoever you rhyme that's got you about to do it, say it. Say his name out loud so they can hear it too. Because they're going to get tired of you saying it and they're going to eventually leave. And then who, whoever you was about to commit that act with, they ain't even going to be there no more. Because they ain't going to be able to stay in that atmosphere. I love y'all so much, baby. I am Latoya O'Keele. I want y'all to make sure y'all sign up. Sign up for the Spiritual Sledgehammer Seminar. Click the link right here on Instagram. Well, is it in my Instagram? You know what? I don't even think it's up there. But go to Latoya O'Keele Academy. <laughs> go to LatoyaO'KeeleAcademy.com. Um, and that's going to take you to the Academy website. And I want y'all to make sure you sign up for the Spiritual Sledgehammer Seminar, okay? And if you're watching from YouTube, click the link below in the description. I'm going to be teaching y'all how to pick up the Spiritual Sledgehammer. This is a parable story. If y'all remember in the Bible, Jesus would often speak about, he would speak on parables. A parable is a earthly story, but it carries a heavenly meaning. Carries a heavenly meaning. God revealed to me a lot of the messages that he gave me, a lot of the teachings that he had me teaching. I, did, I wasn't even realizing that God was doing the same thing with me. It's the same thing. So we know what a sledgehammer is. We know what a, a physical sledgehammer is and what it does. We know what a slow cooker is and what a crock pot does physically. But the, So the Lord said that's an earthly story. That's a physical example, but it carries a heavenly meaning. A heavenly meaning. So the Lord told me in this master class, in this seminar that I'm going to be teaching on May the 31st. Okay, it's going to be on Zoom on May the 31st. So y'all make sure y'all sign up for it. I'm going to be teaching you how to pick up the spiritual sledgehammer and how to bust down every brick, every lie, every limitation that the enemy has built up in your mind. God gave me a vision some time ago where it was a man that was laying bricks. I saw a man's hand that was laying bricks. And this man was laying these bricks very patiently. He was very strategic. He made sure he laid every brick exactly where it needed to be. He wasn't in no hurry. He took his time. He was consistent. He was persistent. He didn't care what the weather looked like. He didn't care what was going on. This man, every single day, he strategically and consistently laid each brick. And he knew that it was going to take him a long time, but he still laid them bricks, still laid them bricks. And then God gave me revelation that that vision, that man's hand that I was seeing, he said, that's the enemy. That is the enemy. He said, that is Satan. And he said, the bricks that he's laying, the enemy has built a wall in your mind. And you are confined to this wall. You are inside of this wall and you don't even know it. This is the thing, until somebody come with the knowledge and somebody come to break you free or you hear something or you get some new knowledge, it's people that live their whole life inside of that wall and they don't even know it. They don't even know it. They wonder why. Why can't I make but a certain amount of money? Why do I keep meeting the same type of people? Why can't I get ahead? Why can't I get a breakthrough? Why can't? It's because of that wall, that mental wall that the enemy has built up in your mind, baby. And he started laying them bricks before you, before you was even born. When you was in your mother's womb, he was laying bricks. He had people speaking stuff. You can hear. The, it's, it's scientific evidence that say that the subconscious mind of a baby can hear in the third trimester. 
You think the enemy didn't know that? You think the enemy wasn't working and people around you, you in the wound and you hearing stuff. Your subconscious mind is hearing stuff. He laying bricks then. And now that you are, an, you are an adult and you trying to change your life, you trying to start a business, you trying to find love, you trying to be successful, you wonder why you can't get no results, you wonder why you can't get ahead, it's because you still in that wall. You still behind that wall. So the Lord say, you got to pick up the spiritual sledgehammer. Come on now. Somebody say that. Say the spiritual sledgehammer, baby. You got to pick up the spiritual sledgehammer and you got to start swinging that thing, baby. That's the only way you're going to get out. Because this wall that the enemy has built up in your mind, it is so big. It is so fortified. That thing is strong. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? It's strong. And I can tell you that it's so strong and it's so powerful because he used kingdom principles in order to build this wall. That's why it's so powerful. That's why you can't break through it. Because the enemy knows the power of principles. He knows the power of God's word. He uses the word to win over you. I just told y'all when he laid the bricks, he was consistent. That's the key. That's a principle, consistency. He didn't care how long it was going to take him. He knew it was going to take a long time in order for the fruit to come to pass. But he didn't stop. He kept laying the bricks until one day there was a huge wall. Do you know that? Do you know that? So the Lord say, why do you give up? Why do you give up? Because it's taking you a long time. Why do you give up? Why, why do you do it one day and then you, don't, you lay off of it for the next three months? Why are you not consistent? These are principles. These are keys that the enemy has used to defeat you. And in order for you to pick up the sledgehammer and tear down this wall, you got to use them same principles. I'm going to teach you how to do that in this class. Okay. So I want y'all to sign up, baby. It is very important that you get in this class. Do you understand me? Don't you let the enemy cause you to miss your move, to miss your moment. The Lord is preparing his people. There's, it's, the shift is here. The transfer is here. But you ain't going to get it any kind of way. Your mind got to be right. So you got to invest in this. God ain't just going to hand something over to you because you the chosen one. He ain't finna just hand something over to you because you a divine one. Because you, you a royal priesthood. No. You got to be in position to receive what the Lord has for you. And it took me investing in my mind. It took me getting in classes. It took me getting with mentors. It took me getting new knowledge. I had to invest to be able to use my gift the way I use my gift now. Every, people want to be gifted and people want to be anointed and people, but don't nobody want to invest. People want everything handed to them. They want everything free. They want everything on the platter. It don't work like that. Come on now. Too much is given, much is required. So I'm telling you that this is about you becoming the person that God created you to be. This is about you investing in your spirit, investing in your mind. You sowing a seed into your destiny. Come on now. I learned that when somebody is teaching me something, when I'm paying for a class and somebody is giving me knowledge and they teaching me something, I don't just look at that as me buying their class and me putting money in their pocket. No, I look at that as me sowing a seed. I'm sowing a seed into my future. It's about me. I'm sowing a seed in my destiny. And I know the power of the seed. I know when you sow that seed, you will reap a harvest. It ain't no doubt about it, baby, because that's universal law. You will reap a harvest. So I want y'all to understand that when you when you invest and you and you invest in like a class or a course or a seminar, this ain't about you just putting money in the instructor pocket. This is about you investing in your future. You sowing a seed into you. You sowing a seed into your destiny. And every seed, y'all better listen to me. Every seed that I have sown into me, I see the fruit of it. I'm still seeing the fruit of it. It's, it's coming back up again. It come back up again every day in my life. It show up from different places, from different sources. People come, people give, people sow. But why? Because I sow. Because I invested. Because I gave. And I still do. Come on now. We want the harvest. We want the overflow. But we don't want to give nothing. We don't want to put nothing in. We don't want to invest nothing. We don't want to sow nothing. Listen, I get the free stuff too. I get the free 99, I get the free dot com, but I, I hear in my spirit and I understand in my spirit when God be calling me to sow. When God say, all right, you heard something, they gave you something and you need to sow into that. You need to sow into that. You need, you need to invest in that. Glory be to God. That's how the wealthy increase their wealth. They invest. How you going to increase? How you going to multiply? By investing in you. 
I love y'all. And I want to see you in that seminar. Okay. May the 31st, 2023. And if you ain't make it live, it'll be a replay. To those of you that come later and you watch this video later, you can purchase the replay. Okay. Remember, if you're in the membership, you don't have to buy it. You get it automatically in your uh, Latoya Okia Academy membership. Don't forget to do y'all homework. Okay. I love y'all so much. And I'll check in with y'all later.